Hey there folks, my name is Eric, and I have been doing video production work for a very long time, a good eh, about 25 years or so. And the latest piece of equipment that I've started using is a 360 camera, namely the Insta360 ONE R. Now, one of the issues that I see with a lot of people who are getting into this because the, the 360 video is still very new technology, right? I mean, a lot of people, if you take one of these cameras out, they still, they have no idea what it is. They go, oh, is that a GoPro, right? I mean, GoPro has been around for a good decade, right? They've been around for 10 years. People are pretty familiar with action cameras, but they don't know anything about 360 cameras yet. <laughs> so, one of the things that people want to know is how do you reframe a 360 video? Because I think that a lot of people are making the mistake of zooming in a little too far when they're redoing these videos, when they're re-editing the video in post. And as a result, the videos look really bad, right? They start to look really grainy. They start to look really pixelized because people don't understand the limitations of how far you can go. So that's what this video is all about. Shockingly, this is something that I have not seen anyone else explain. I've looked all over the internet and nobody else tells you, how do you figure this out? How do you know how much room you've got to work with in terms of reframing the video? So here you go. This will show you exactly how to do it. Okay, so this is basically how it works to figure out how much we can crop in on our video so that we still have the proper full high definition resolution of 1920 by 1080. So right here we are in Insta360 Studio. And we can look at our video in two different ways. We can either look at it through this view, which is the equirectangular view of both cameras stitched together. Or we can come in here to free capture, where we can kind of spin around and look down and look up and look at our whole 360 video, right? So this is what we want to try to figure out. How much can we zoom in? on this footage, right? Because we know that we can we can come in like this, we can zoom in close, we can start to pull way out, right? We want to know at what point are we at true high definition footage. So the way that you can figure this out and you know, I could just give you the numbers, and I could just plug in the numbers and give it to you and that would be the end of it. But I want to show you how I calculated this so that you'll understand exactly what we're doing. So the first thing that we want to do is take this view and save a still frame of it, right? So that we have it in its full resolution, which is what I have right here in Photoshop, right? So now I have this screenshot from that video. And if we look at the image size, we can see that, yes, this is the full 5.7K frame, right? This is 5760 by 2880 pixels. So the way that we figure out how to do a high definition video is we just make a new file that is full high def, right? This is a 1920 by 1080 frame. We drag that onto our 5K image and we turn down the opacity and then we move it to a spot where, you know, we can kind of see the full frame, okay? So now we know that that's how much space we have to work with, which is pretty cool, right? Because that's a pretty small section of the frame. So as long as we don't zoom in any tighter than this, we know that we're getting the full high def image, right? So let's zoom in a little bit closer here come into 50% on this. So, so this is basically what we're looking to imitate, right? If we have a frame that's larger than this, then we know it's going to look really good because it's going to be scaled down. We don't want a frame that's smaller than this, 
Okay, so let's go back into Insta360 and take a look in free capture at how big a frame like that would be. So let's come over here so we can kind of redo that frame. And here I've actually got it all set up already on this keyframe. So if I click right here, there we go. That should be about right. So let's look at the left and right side of the frame. So it looks like we've got this fence post right here on the right, and we can just see a little bit of that sign. So let's come back in here. And okay, so technically this could be slid over to, um, looks like I'm right about there, right? So that fence post is just outside the frame. So our left to right then looks looks pretty good because we're a little bit wider, right? Remember I said it's okay to go wider, you just don't want to go smaller. So left to right, you know, it's getting cut off right about here, right in front of that fence post, so we're a little bit behind it. That's a little bit larger frame, so that's good. So top to bottom, let's see. If we go with the very top of that light fixture, and then we look at the bottom of the frame, where are we going to be there? Let's see, if we move that up, so that's at the very top. And then we've got, ah, like, the corner of lane 2, right, the bottom of that gate. So let's look at that. Um, yeah, see, once again, here, this is actually the bottom of lane 1. So again, this this shot that we have framed up is quite a bit larger. Okay, so this is bigger than what we need. You know, technically we could zoom in on this a little bit and it should still look really good. So, this is the settings that I tend to use to get this kind of frame. I have a 65 on my field of view and I have a .30 on the distance. Okay, so let's change those. Let's, let's go to some of these presets and you'll see how they look different, right? So we go to this one. So that's a 90 field of view and zero on the distance. As you can see, that's a little bit distorted, right? The other thing we want to do is try to keep this image as flat as possible, right? Because we don't want to have this weird fisheye distortion. And you can see as we pull the bike into that corner, it gets distorted. As we pull things up into any of the corners, it gets really warped. Right? So we don't want to do that. What we want to do is zoom in as tight as we can. Right? And once again, too wide, too distorted. Okay, So we want to zoom in as tight as we can, and we want to keep it as flat as possible. So if I change this back again to my 65, and now you notice when I put like the bikes in the corner, if I kind of rearrange this frame to put anything in the corners. It's a little bit better, right? It's not as distorted. But now if I change my distance down to 30 and flatten things out, right, now you see the distortion is reduced even more. I'm mainly looking at the front tire of this bike, the front wheel, and you can see it's not terribly distorted. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of distortion because we are using fish-eyed lenses, but it looks pretty good. It looks pretty flat. So, for me in my videos, this is what I like to try to stick with. 65 and 30 makes it pretty flat, and it also allows you to have this full high def frame without losing any of your original resolution. All right, so now you know how to reframe a 360 video. So, as time goes on, I'm sure the resolution of these videos is going to get much higher, right? I mean, as of right now, in February of 2020, 5.7K is kind of the standard. I'm sure in a few years, 8K will be the standard, and it'll continue to go up as camera technology and computer technology gets faster and faster and improves more and more. But no matter how high the resolution of the camera happens to be, 
you will always be able to use this exact same technique of looking at the full frame, figuring out how big you want your final image to be, and then zooming in accordingly, right? So I hope that was helpful, and thank you very much for watching the video.